this morning. So you may hear some background noise, I apologize. Miles. Uh, announcements are few. I just wanted to let everybody know I heard this morning that, um, one moment. I heard this morning from Reverend Lewis that Audrey Jackson's grandson is in Maria Ferreri. He has an undisclosed um, stomach bug and he's been in since Tuesday. So I wanted to just lift up Audrey this morning and her entire family uh, for answers and recovery. Um, you know, that first song, I am here today because of God's mercy. And uh, that struck me because I am here today, here on this earth, uh, here with many blessings and here with the Calvary community only because of God's mercy. And um, I am grateful for that this morning. So without any further ado, before Miles interrupts our Sunday worship one more time, I'm going to say to Kate to take a deep breath, drop my shoulders, be present where my feet are, and please join me in the call to worship. Blessed are those who have not seen. And you've come to believe. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's steadfast, God's steadfast love, love in the worship for heaven. Our first hymn this morning with Mr. Joseph Bush, The Church is One Foundation. <laughs> Good morning, church family. We're grateful to be here this morning, and we pray that we are centered on our gathering of faithfulness in order to move forward in this wonderful experience we call church. Won't you bow your heads with me as we pray our prayer of confession? Let us pray. Lord, we 
come seeking your continued mercy as we travel on our spiritual journey. How marvelous is your grace that fills the gaps where otherwise we would fall. We come this morning with thankful hearts during this season of Easter tide, enable us to focus on the reason for this season and capture the essential understanding of your resurrection in our lives. Enable us to do the work of God. Believe the one who keeps us in perfect peace. When we trust in the word made flesh, we ask these things and pray. They are acceptable in thy sight. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Amen. Amen. Amen, Amen everybody. Amen. Amen. You know, it is important to remember it is this season that gives us the reason to call ourselves Christian. It's not Christmas. It's not that tree that we decorate. It's this reason during this season that we are able to spring forth live, rise up out of the ashes of our grief, move the stones of despair from our lives because of Jesus' example. But I must admit, sometimes I, let the, I put the stones there. Sometimes I keep from getting up. I have, in, in my times past, fallen in a hole and people have, through God's help, have tried to help me, but I decided to decorate the hole rather than move forward. Amen. I don't know about you today, but I'm grateful for grace. I'm grateful for mercy. For grace and mercy fills in the gaps of my missteps in order for me to move forward. I thank God. This is our pardon. Thanks be to God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Gracious God, as we turn to your word for us, may the spirit of God rest upon us. Help us to be steadfast in our hearing, in our speaking, in our believing, and in our living. Amen. Amen, amen, Sister Kate, amen. Our Old Testament lesson is taken from the book of Psalms, Psalm number 27 verses in its entirety. Psalm 27, when you have it, say amen. 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 The Lord is my light <clears throat> and my salvation whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, 
Yet I will be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord that will I seek after. To live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. <clears throat> Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You who have been my help, do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. If my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> good morning, good morning again. Sound twenty seven. I'd like to read, you've heard the reading uh, in the New Revised Standard Version, but I'd just like to read the last few verses of 27th Psalm in the Amplified Version. Starting at verse 11. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me <clears throat> on a level path because of my enemies who lie in wait. Do not give up to the will of my adversaries for false witnesses have come against me. They breathe out violence. I have, I would have had, excuse me, I would have despaired had I not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for 
and confidently expect the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for and confidently expect the Lord. Amen, amen. I would have despaired had I not believed. Amen. I believe that I shall see <clears throat> the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, this portion of scripture I've heard basically all my life. And you can read it, but I, I personally believe, Peg, that uh, you have to have experienced some things in order to come to some level ground in what the writer is saying. Very often in our lives, at least in my life, you know, uh, I have I have been a churchgoer all my life. I, I, I spent a lot of time from a baby to the present in the fellowship of faith. And of course, uh, Crystal Renee, there are things that preachers have said that I had no clue about what they were saying, but because my mama and daddy <clears throat> or someone significant in my life brought me and uh, uh, kept me there in spite of sometimes my resistance, I was there and I learned and was modeled, modeled their faith or belief to the present until, of course, life and life experiences happen. Sometimes, sometimes it takes, you know, you can tell me, you can tell me the fire is hot, but I got to experience it for myself. I wish I had somebody here with me. There are things that we experience, and I think that it is this, it is the experiential presence of mind that this writer is writing from. The Lord is my light. Amen. Even in the midst of darkness, God is my light. I look to God not only in the daytime of my experience, but especially when I feel so isolated and all alone. The Lord is my light. Now, you can't say that until you've gone through something. Oh, you can practice saying it for sure. I practice saying it. I remember early in my marriage with uh, Cynthia, she would always say, oh, this is my favorite psalm. This is my favorite scripture. Of course, she was a Sunday school teacher at the time. I understand that. But she can say it, I love that scripture before, but I know through the things that we've been through, with the things that we've been through, it has only been God's light, have mercy Jesus, that has brought us through. Now, we thought we had each other alone, but it was God alone that led us through trials and circumstances. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Well, it takes, it takes a minute really to get to that place because fear encapsulates most of our lives most of the time. It is something that captures our attention because fear is an emotion that God has for us to remind us of the many dangers and the toils and snares that we may experience. There are a lot of young people, they say today, they say today, they have no fear. Well, I believe that 
there are things in their existence, particularly within the media, that you know you can play these games of uh, various games of uh, I don't even know the names. I don't know the names, but I know that there's a lot of blood and loss in the game. And if you repeat that game enough, you begin to think that that game is what? Real. Amen. Until you get shot. Or until you get cut. Or until you can't get up. The Lord is my life, light and salvation. Whom should I fear? I come to fear as a result of my own experiences in my life. And uh, I, I had an older woman say to me one day, until, until the rubber hits the road, you will have no idea of what that road is going to, how bumpy that road is going to be like. So much of my life I've been carried by others, even spiritually. Amen, somebody. Sometimes you've heard that song. You may have heard that song before, Marlene. Uh, my mother prayed for me had me on her mind, took the time to pray for me. I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed for me. Sometimes it is the experience of the elders of the church that have kept me prayed up, if you will, filled with spiritual uh, compassion. So when we get to the end of this wonderful psalm where he says, teach me your way and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Sometimes uh, people who smile in your face are not always your friend. Amen, somebody. But you don't learn that by just accepting that. It's about an experience. It's about a relationship. Without relationship, the, co the cornerstone of our lives is relationship. Uh, one writer said, no man or woman is an island. We can't really exist completely by ourselves. One of the things that we do uh, in, in this world to make things punitive is to isolate people sometimes. And that isolation, the absence of social contact, can be devastating. I've worked with many people who said their isolation in certain situations have driven them crazy. Why? Because when you only hear your own voice and if you get into the many levels of my wicked thoughts, Les Rose, it is hard sometimes to get out of that circle of defeat. It's not the circumstance that has made me angry or depressed. It's my choice, Marlene, in that circumstance. When I know and have come to a, a level mind that I could have done something differently. Amen. I think it was Einstein who said, <clears throat> insanity is something that I do over and over again and expect different results. Amen. So when the writer says, teach me, Lord, your way, lead me, that means I have to have some openness, some sense of direction from God, or east, at the very least, ask for direction. One songwriter put it <clears throat> this way, ask the Savior to help you comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He's willing to aid you. God will carry you through. I wish I had a witness. Amen. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord. I have, I would have despaired had I not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord. I've had recently some preachers ask me, what is, 
How is your soul? This was just recently. I'm talking about within the last 48 hours. This is virtually too, by the way. I'm kind of exhausted virtually, if I got to be honest. How is your soul, Rev? And as people were going around on the screen, I wrote the words, I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. And then I wrote a line on the paper and I said, I wrote rather, we shall overcome someday. And I put a line under that. And then I put the question, when? So when they got to me and asked me, what is it you think your soul, where is your soul? And I've said, thinking really of this text all week, <clears throat> I have to keep pressing on in spite of what's going on around me. I, I can't, I, I cannot uh, wither away Leroy because of what is happening around me, even though I see people like me being shot and killed, I, I can't wither away from the reality that I need to press on. And as a child growing up in the church, as a preacher's kid, and all the rallies that we went through, we shall overcome was the end of every gathering someday. Deep in my heart, it said Leroy, I believe. It is what I believe, Crystal, that can change my life. And that's why this writer says, I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord. I would have despaired had I not believed. I wish I had somebody. I don't want to. I don't want to go too long today. But I want you to know that if you are interested in moving forward in your life, you've got to believe that God has a greater plan than what you're thinking. Bible says, "My thoughts are not God's thoughts." God has a greater plan, Marlene. Oh, we can talk and banter about and laugh and talk and whatever, but God has a greater plan. God's plan overshadows any of my thoughts. And this is why the writer says, teach me, Lord, your way. One writer said, order my steps. Help me know that we can do this together. Amen, somebody. Amen, amen. Somebody out there understands with all the death and destruction around us today, I would have despaired, hallelujah, had I not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord. Now, here's the thing. I grew up, and you grew up as, as well, uh, Leroy, Hearing about going to heaven. Yeah, I want to go. I, listen, listen, Les Rose. I want to go to heaven, but I ain't homesick. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And, and, Mimi, this is what I really say, what the, what the scripture is saying. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the, of the Lord, not over there. Amen. I'm talking about right now in the land of the living. Amen. You know, I, you know, it, it is about right now. I can I can't I can't worry about what happens over there. I gotta look at what's happening now in my life. Amen, somebody. Somebody is somebody on the screen today is listening and they're concerned about what's gonna happen to me in the future. I'm going to close with this, and I, I, this was not my thought. One writer said it, one songwriter said, I don't know about tomorrow. 
I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from the sunshine. For the skies may turn to gray. I don't worry about the future. But I know what Jesus said. And today he walks beside me. And he knows, hallelujah, what is ahead. The last verse, wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Wait. Work with. Wait for and confidently expect that God's got your back. Amen. 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 I'll be right with you. Sorry, guys. <laughs> no problem. So listen, I want you to unmute yourselves and let's pass the peace with one another. Peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Also with you. Let's say hello. Hello, everybody. Hello. Oh, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We all good morning, Calvary. Is that? Uh, I think I see somebody all the way in Florida. Yeah. Is that you, uh, Kathy? Yeah. Good morning, Dad. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Very Who's good. with you, Kate? Graduated safely. I see on my screen, uh, Mr. Metz, he's here. Um, hey, Alex. <laughs> hey, Phyllis. Hey, good to see you, baby. Good to see you. I think I saw Anastasia somewhere. Yeah, yeah you did. Yeah, tough Anastasia. corner. Uh, okay, well, well, I don't know how to do this. You know? <laughs> all, all my grandbabies out here and all my new babies, my angels. Good morning, Leroy. Good morning, everyone. Very good. Very good. Nice. Very good. Is Joe out there? I'm sorry. Jim's out there. Jim's out there. Cynthia. Don't go back. Howdy. I hear his yeah. door. Hey, Joe. Peace, Joe. Hey, Joe. Good morning, Joe. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Auntie Joe. Hello. You know what a wonder, what a wonderful community we have that we can gather in this platform. I don't know what we do, Joe Kovacs, and we didn't have it. I, I know when we were growing up, Joe, uh, tin cans and strings would have been our <laughs> way of uh, <laughs> telephone. <laughs> But I don't think I, I know some of you don't have any idea what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was having fun long ago. Sure Amen. Yeah. Amen. Do we have any prayer concerns? We received a prayer concern, Joe, this morning from uh, from Audrey saying her grandson was in the hospital and uh, from from un an unknown diagnosis. He had a stomach bug or something. They were concerned enough to have him in the hospital. I want you to, I'm asking for prayers for. Uh, I think Doesn't say Jake. which one. Uh, his, that was Jake. Uh, uh, yeah, Jake. I mean, uh, no, it's it's Jackson. Jack, Jack, Jackson. Another J, sorry. Um, also, uh, some of you met him before. My one of my dear cousins, uh, Arthur Head. He died yesterday, uh, two days ago, uh, in South Carolina. He was suffering from Parkinson's. He used to live 
in Newburgh and worked. Uh, I have some. I have some background noises. Excuse me. Uh, that's my wife. I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, he worked for. He was a veteran and worked for the Veterans Administration before he moved to South Carolina. Uh, you know, there's so much I, I can't tell you. Maybe, maybe I can. Uh, I get so many calls from people being so uh, isolated uh, and get caught up in their own thoughts. And I mean, it's easy to get lost lost in my thoughts, uh, Crystal. It is, it's so easy. But I, I look to the hills from whence cometh my help, my help coming from God. Are there any other prayer concerns? Um, yes. Uh, first, prayers of Thanksgiving. We have um, about 13 people watching with us on Facebook Live this morning. So that's wonderful. wonderful. But um, And we have several prayer requests. So Sheila Williams asked for prayers for my brother, who was rushed back to the hospital um, last night. Um, Audrey um, is on and also asked for prayers for her grandson, Jackson. Um, Boris uh, asked for prayer. She had a um, for relief from from intense pain caused by a fall. Um, and then I received a call from my mother-in-law, Sharon Clark. She asked for prayers for um, John's uncle, Gary, who is in need of back surgery and uh, won't be able to have it for two weeks and is currently immobilized. Um, he's a farmer in Iowa and it's planting season. Um, so it's a very stressful time. So prayers that his surgery gets bumped up maybe. Um, and then Heather had prayers. She said she would like to pray for a colleague whose th three-year-old granddaughter was recently diagnosed with COVID. <clears throat> prayers for everyone. Any other prayer concerns? Um, I would like to request prayers for people who are suffering with um, different forms of mental illness and people who are struggling um, in recovery from substance issues. I would like to pray for those who, uh, who may have some problems that were created by themselves, but who will not, who will not take ownership blaming others. Amen. I have prayer concerns um, for those who are suffering because of the volcanic eruption in the Caribbean. Thank you, Arlette. And we are supporting that effort. We'll be sending some masks, Calvary, in collaboration with uh, uh, two other churches. We'll be sending it out. Is it 6,000 masks? Yes, 6,000 masks. And thank you so very much. Uh, for those who are, you know, here's the thing. Everyone is our brother and sister. Amen, somebody. You're supposed to say amen. 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 You're supposed to say amen. Let me say that one more time. Let's practice it. Everybody is our brother and sister. Amen. amen. Yeah. And let's realize, even those folks that we don't like, they're our <laughs> brothers and sisters. <laughs> Amen, somebody. <laughs> Amen. Any other prayer concerns? Yes. Oh, Anastasia, go ahead, baby. Um, prayer for my staff will always help me out when I feel down, and my grandparents and my auntie. Very good. Thank you, baby. Any other? Good to see you, Anastasia. I see two. All right, please mute yourselves as we come to prayer. Merciful and eternal God, we are so grateful for the opportunity that in spite of all of our adversaries, false witnesses, violence that breathes around us, we have you. Without you, we are nothing like a ship without a sail. And so therefore, Lord, as we come and we pray, we not only wait, but speak confidently, expecting you to make a difference in our lives beyond our personal experience. Enable us, O oh Lord, to be the witnesses that you have called us to be 
Yes, the living letters. We've named many people today and we ask that you be with them, but also all of those that are unnamed who are brothers and sisters who are hurting in the world. We ask, oh Lord, that you give us the strength and the courage to move forward and confidently and being the witnesses that you've called us to be. Now, Lord, we remember the words of our Lord and Savior who taught us to pray together, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, good morning, everyone. <laughs> um, my name is Marlene Taylor. I'm a member of Calvary. And it's time for our offering message. Um, the message that I would like to share with you today uh, comes from two scriptures. From Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst with new wine. These are promises from the Lord. Oftentimes we are hesitant because we say, I only have this much. I really don't have enough for tomorrow um, or later. So we're always projecting into the future. But God says to us, number one, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I am with you always. I will always provide for you. So he's saying to us, whatever it is we have, bring it to him. <laughs> he will bless it and multiply it back to you. So don't be afraid to give of your gifts, your talents, your finances, of your increase. Because if it wasn't for God, guess what? We wouldn't have anything at all, including our lives. So fear not, give, and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together. God has ways to take a fish and tell the men to go fishing. And it said, open his mouth. And in the fish's mouth was what? Money. God is amazing. So never, never doubt. Always look for the most amazing thing to happen when you're dealing with our Heavenly Father. Okay, everyone? So if you would like to give, there are several ways we can do that. We could donate um, via PayPal through Calvary, C A L V A R Y, Prez, P R E S, by bychurch.org, it's on your screen, or you could mail it. Um, you could mail it to Calvary Presbyterian, 120 South Street, Newburgh, New York, 12550. Thank you very much for your giving and know that God will repay you. God bless. Now we have the offertory by uh, Joseph Henry Bush, our artist in residence.
Um, Joseph, that was just absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much. Now we will have our prayer of dedication. Father, we come to you with open hearts and open minds with full gratitude. You have given us the greatest gift of all, which is Jesus Christ, your son, our savior. And in gratitude, we return to you a portion of what you have given us to serve you here at Calvary and around the world. We thank you, God, for this glorious opportunity. Take what we have given, multiply it, and use it for your glory. Amen. What a wonderful day it is. The sun is shining. We're grateful to God encourages us. I want us to be mindful as we leave this day that God is faithful. Repeat after me. God is faithful. God and is because faithful. of we knowing us knowing that God is faithful, we have no need to despair because we believe in the goodness of God. And we have confidence, confidence, faith that God is with us. And as the writer said, be strong and let your heart take courage. Amen. As we leave this service and we face another week, let us take courage and be strong. And now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of God's Holy Spirit rest and abide with us and those whom we love. And yes, less rose, even those we don't like, both now and forevermore. Let every heart say, Amen. Please stay for our postlude and coffee hour.